Welcome to tutorial 9 for the Edexcel Statistics 1 A level module, and this one is on skewness and comparing. As always, if you're looking for further help with your studies, do check out youtube.com slash Mr. Arnold's Maths. Okay, so we're going to talk about skewness today, and skewness is basically the statistical name for the shape of a distribution. So, when we know about the skewness of a distribution, it tells us roughly what the uh, distribution will look like. And basically, the diagram can show the skewness. Um, it's either going to be positively skewed, negatively skewed, or it could be symmetric. Now, the way uh, we view this, we have got a, a few um, diagrams for you to look at. Uh, this is a positive skew. The reason why it's a positive skew is because it it tails off, it skews off in the positive direction. So as we get more and more positive in the x-axis, it becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, so it's positively skewed. Um, conversely, if we look at this diagram, it's negatively skewed. Negatively skewed because it tails off towards the negative direction, so that's negatively skewed. And then finally we have symmetric, and that's when we have basically no skewing whatsoever. So we could take a knife to our distribution and slice it almost perfectly in half and both halves will be pretty much the same. Now the diagram is one way of looking at skewness but another way of looking at uh, skewness is by using quartiles. So I've got uh, some quartiles here and I've also got some box and whisker plots to kind of show you what's going on. Uh, the first one here uh, when we can see the median is very close to the lower quartile uh, in other words, that Q2 minus Q1, so if you do that value, subtract that value, or I beg your pardon, uh, that value, subtract that value, Q, let's change the red, Q2 minus Q1, if we subtract them and we get a value that is smaller than Q3, subtract Q2, that tells me that it's positively skewed because it tails off in the positive direction. Uh, the middle one here, uh, hopefully it's quite clear to see that if Q2 minus Q1 is equal to Q3 minus Q2, that tells me that it's symmetric. And then pretty much the opposite of this one here, if we find that the median is closer to the upper quartile than it is to the lower quartile, or by using this formula here, it is negatively skewed. So it's handy to know these three um, kind of formulas here to work out skewness and know what each one means. Another way we can do it is by looking at the measures of location, uh, which is our averages. And if we find that the mode equals the median equals the mean, that tells me that my distribution is roughly symmetric. If I find that the mode is less than the median and less than the mean, it's positively skewed. And if the mode is greater than the median and that's greater than the mean, it's going to be negatively skewed. Again, just nice to know these. But we would like to evaluate skewness, and we do that by using the mean, median, and standard deviation. So if I do three times the mean minus the median and divide that by its standard deviation, that will give me a value uh, for its skewness. Now, if we find that we have bigger numbers, the bigger the numbers, the greater the skew. And the closer to zero, obviously, the more likely it is to be symmetric. If, however, we find that we have a positive number, it means it's a positive skew. If we have a negative number, it's going to be a negative skew. So let's take a look at an example here. Right, so we've got the stem and leaf diagram here of uh, a group of students in a test and I'm asked to write down the modal score well this one is fairly straightforward to do provided you've done the other videos you can see that 68 crops up more than anything else so 68 is my mode find the three quartiles for these data so let's have a look if we've got well we, we're going to need to know how many pieces of data altogether? So I'm going to work out the total number of pieces of data. Uh, eight 
15, 25, 35, 39, 47, 50. So we've got 50 students. That means the median is going to be between the 25th and the 26th student. So let's see where that lies. Um, I'm going to write down the cumulative frequencies here on the side as well because it makes life a little bit easier. That's 3, 8, 8 and 7 is 15, uh, 25, 39, 47 and then finally 50. So I'm looking for the value between the 25th and 26th student. Uh, we can see that at the end of this section here we've got 25 data values so that's that's going to be uh, number 25 and that will be number 26. So the median or Q2 that's going to equal 61 plus 59 divided by 2, which is 60. So I know Q2 equals 60. All right, let's look for Q1. Uh, to work out Q1, we do N divided by 4. So 50 divided by 4 is going to give me 12.5. And because it's 12.5, we round up to the next value. So I'm going to look at value number 13. That's an approximately sign, by the way. So let's count along. Uh, we've got eight values here. Uh, I need to get to 13, so I'm going to need another five of these values. One, two, three, four, five. So it's this guy here. So Q1 is going to be 46. Q1 equals 46. And then Q3. To get Q3, we do three times N over four. So three times 50 over four is going to give me 20, I beg your pardon, that's wrong, not 20, 37.5, 37.5, so it's the 37.5 value, which is approximately, again, this is not a whole number, so we round up to the next one, I need the 38th value, okay, so we got 39 at this point, that means the 38th is right here, so that's 39 there, that must be 38. So that's a value of 69. So Q3 equals 69. All fairly trivial here so far. Uh, for these data, we're giving the sum of x equals 2,873, and the sum of x squared is uh, 177,353. We're asked to calculate the two decimal places, the mean and standard deviation for these data. So let's do the mean. I'm going to do it over here. So I'm going to work out x bar, and that equals the sum of the x values, 2, 8, 7, 3, divided by the number of values, which is 50. So bringing out our calculator, 2, 8, 7, 3, divided by 50 equals... 57.46 and it says the two decimal places so 57.46 will do 57.46 and then the standard deviation uh, I'm going to work out the variance first so let's work out sigma squared sigma squared comes from doing the mean of the squares so sigma x squared over n minus the square of the mean, sigma x over n all squared. So putting these values in now, that's going to be 1, 7, 7, 3, 5, 3, all divided by n, which is 50, minus... Um, 2873, 2873, all divided by 50, all squared. So, we'll switch this over to this side, clear that up. 177353 over 50, minus. Uh, open my brackets, 
2873 out of 50 and that's all squared so put it into the calculator exactly as we have it written down here that's 245.4084 a little bit tight for space there and to get the standard deviation we need to take the square root of the variance so to save myself the hassle I'm just going to hit square root of my answer and that gives me to two decimal places 15.67 so 15.6767 okay so that's the mean and the standard deviation next it asks me to calculate the value of three times the mean minus the median over the standard deviation and comment on the skewness so I'm going to have to free up a little bit of room here um, and I think I'm going, no, we won't need that. Let's, let's get rid of that. So three times the mean minus the median over the standard deviation. So we're going to do three times. Well, the mean is 57.46 minus the median. The median we worked out to be 59. I beg your pardon, uh, the median is 60, it's here, Q2, uh, minus 60, all divided by the standard deviation, which is 15.67, 15.67, so let's bring out the calculator again, 3 times the mean, 57.46, minus the median, 60, close the brackets, and this is the wrong button to press. That's all divided by 15.67, and that gives us minus, let's just write this to two decimal places, or let's do three sig fig actually, let's do three sig fig, minus 0 0.486. Equals minus 0 0.486. 486 so it's a negative number and it's not zero so it's slightly negatively skewed that's a minus with a v shorthand for negative skew my writing is shocking at the minute skew <laughs> okay moving on to the next Part, use two further methods to show that these data are negatively skewed. So to show that it's negatively skewed, let's just go back to what we we did a little bit earlier. We had this one, didn't we? We had, um, if it was negatively skewed, it's Q2 minus Q1 should be greater than Q3 minus Q2. So we're going to do Q2. minus Q1 uh, 46 should be less than Q3 minus or I beg your pardon not less than it should be greater than what am I saying 69 minus 60 and that gives us 14 is greater than 9 and if that value is greater than that value that also shows that it's negatively skewed and then the last value or the last one we could do was this one to show that it's negatively skewed the mode should be greater than the median and that should be greater than the mean so the mode should be greater than the median and that should be greater than the mean. Uh, let's do this in green. The mode we've already worked out to be 68. The median Q2 is 60 and the mean 
is 57.46 and that means the mode is greater than the median and that's greater than the mean and that also shows that it's negatively skewed another way you could do it is if you actually turn your head to the right and turn it sideways you can actually see the shape of the distribution partially you can see that it goes up and up and up and then it actually tails down in the negative direction so this is going to look a little bit strange a little bit strange but we'll just do it if you turn it around you can actually see that it skews off to the left in the negative direction and that's why it's negatively skewed as well okay time for you to have a go so here are the arm spans for a class of students they're actually my own students um, so try and calculate the mean the median and the mode and then use three times the mean minus the median over the standard deviation comment on the skewness and then check your skewness by using the quartiles so pause the video now and try the question Okay, hopefully we've had a go at that. Uh, here's the solution. I'll kind of talk you through it. Um, so the mean, median, and mode I've written down here. We got uh, sigma x, or sorry, uh, x bar is 172 centimeters. Median is 173. That was given by the fact there was 31 students. So it will be the 16th person. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So it's that one there 173 and uh, the mode there was no mode second part use three times the mean minus the median over the standard deviation so I've just plugged the values in here we get minus 0 0.36 so it's a little negatively skewed and then to check my skewness using the quartiles I do Q2 minus Q1 that gives me 6 Q3 minus Q2 that gives me 5 I can see 6 is greater than 5 and that implies that it's negative. Like before, I could always, if I turn my head sideways just to confirm it, we can see it actually looks like it's um it looks like it's symmetric. So it's almost symmetric. It's almost symmetric, it's very, very close to zero. Where's the number I'm looking for here? This is very, very close to zero, but not quite zero, so it is a little negatively skewed. Okay, just a couple of things to note on when you're making comparisons. Um, always comment on a measure of location or an average. Um, always comment on a measure of spread or dispersion. I mean, most often you're going to use the standard deviation. Uh, comment on the skewness. We've talked about that in the video. And literally, when you're commenting on the skewness, just say if it's positive, negative, or symmetric. Um, now, for commenting on the skewness, if you want to comment on the skewness, you use quartiles when the data is skewed and the mean and standard deviation when the distribution is fairly symmetric. That's all from me. Uh, hopefully you found the video useful. Um, we'll be back with a new tutorial soon. Uh, best of luck with the revision and I'll talk to you again sometime. Oh, and also you should be able to now do exercise 4F from the textbook. Bye for now.